the toes of the statue. Folklore has it that this will bring you good fortune. of the Republic, which was sculpted by Oscar J.W. Hansel. This work of art was designed to honor the accomplishments of the building genius of America. In the same way the pyramids represent ancient Egypt, or the Colosseum represents Rome. At first glance, one is usually drawn to the massive white wall that proudly displays the American flag Thank you. The Department of the Interior. At the top of the flagpole, 142 feet above the sculpture, you see a golden ball. The ball points to where the center of our sun was on September 30th, 1935, the day President Franklin D. Roosevelt dedicated the dam. On the terrazzo floor you were standing on, Embedded are 209 metal discs. Each disc is scaled to the exact diameter with a relative apparent magnitude of all of the stars visible with the naked eye from this exact location at 8.56 p.m. rock that the winged figures of the Republic rest upon is called black diorite. Like all the building materials used in the construction of the dam, this rock came from one of the then 48 states. More precisely, it came from a location near Santa Ana, California. The winged figures are made of statuary bronze. The castings are over 30 feet tall, weigh over four tons, and were the largest monumental bronzes ever cast in the United States. The artist said the building of Hoover Dam belongs to the sides of the dam. The sculptor, therefore, gave the bronzes which guard the flag the look of eagles. He also gave them the vital upward thrust of an aspirational gesture, the 
symbolize the readiness of the defense of our institutions and keeping of our spiritual people ever ready to be on the field. That's okay. supporting the shield composed of 13 red and white stripes. These stripes represent the 13 original states. The blue bar united the shield that represents the United The shield is Earth years 
or one with great ear, or a platonic ear in astronomy terms. Marked on the yellow band are significant historical periods, starting with the completion of the Eastern Pyramids in 2700 BC. Next is the star that represents the birth of Christ, starting the common era and progressing to the actual day of time of dedication, September 30th, 1935. By following the wheel of time around the back of the monument, you will locate the Vega, which has become the North Star thousands of years in the future. He also gave them the vital upward thrust of an aspirational gesture to symbolize the readiness for defense of our institutions and keeping of our spiritual eagles ever ready to be on the wing. Another example of symbolism directly in front of the monument is the American Ball. It is prominently Now we are approaching the site of the mascot dog of the dam, who's buried here. As you can see, people walk by and don't even stop. Yet this is a, a, a historic monument. The dog being the only thing buried at the dam. He died in February 21st, 1941, when he was run over by a truck. Apparently it was a warm day, and he took refuge in the shade of a truck that had been sitting right over here. When the truck driver got back, 
started up the truck. He did not see the sleeping dog. He was about 10 years old at that time and probably had some hearing problems. The driver put the truck in gear, started it up, and stopped suddenly when he heard this banshee-like wailing and the crunching of bone as his truck rode over the dog. Immediately he knew that something terrible had happened. It was a bad day, that day at the dam and in Boulder City. Everything stood still. The workers got permission from the Bureau of Reclamation to dig this grave and bury the dog at the grave site. Here, right on the dam, right across from the entryway into the visitor center and the dam tours. This has a lot of significance for those who lived in Boulder City and had worked on the dam for many years until 1979 when the original plaque was removed and replaced with this one about nine months later. What had happened, the original gravesite and plaque had the word NIG on it, which a man from Madison, Wisconsin felt was racist and insulted the Negroes at that time. And he protested to the Bureau, his senators, congressmen, and everybody else that he could get a hold of. And eventually the Bureau gave in and removed the plaque. Well, there was such an uproar from the citizens in Boulder City that they decided to write a letter campaign to their congressman. And they had a petition going with over 500 signatures that they submitted to their congressman and to the Bureau. But in order to be politically correct and to be sensitive to the feelings of the black people at that time, it was decided to take the plaque down and then later to replace it with this one that you see now. Notice it does not mention the dog's name whatsoever. It just says that he was the mascot. But his name is Nig, N-I-G. Basically, it's short for what the workers knew and were accustomed to calling black people, nigger. Even though nowadays people claim that nig did not represent nigger, but represented something else, like a hammer or a tool that was called a nig, used to break rock, or that it came from um, the literature where this term was used in reference to a dog in the Spoon River anthologies. Suffice it to say, this is where we are today. And as you can see, this cover is over the grave. As far as I know, they never removed Nig that was etched in the concrete under this grave marker. So that it's probably under there, but I doubt if I can get the Bureau to open it up so we can see. So that's the story of Nig, the mascot of the Hoover Dam.